Hi everyone, this is a really short little video on some of the advancements in CAD and CAM that have happened over the years. Things that could come up in the exam, paper two, and um, I've only got one slide for this, but on the, on the slide that I show you, there are some examples of how CAD has improved, how it's moved on, and um, just some things to look out for. None of it's too complicated, so let me show you the slide. So we're going to talk through these um, one by one. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six different things um, that are mentioned in the uh, textbook about the improvements in CAD and CAM. Just a reminder what CAD and CAM actually stand for. So you've got computer aided design. If we don't know this, we're a bit in trouble. Um, and you've got computer aided manufacture. So make sure you're happy with those. Um, so the first thing was the use of standardized file formats that can easily be shared uh, across the world. So things like um, DXF is probably not one that you've heard of. This is quite often used for um, laser cutters and things like that. But STL, an STL file, that is a 3D printing file. So STLs are basically called stereolithography files. I don't think you would need to know that particularly. But an STL, it saves a CAD file, like a space claim file or a SOLIDWORKS file or a, anything from a 3D uh, modeling piece of software. If you save it as an STL, what it does is it imagine you had something like a sphere, it makes the surface into lots of different triangles that the computer or the, the 3D printing um, piece of software can then calculate how it's going to 3D print this, um, this file. So an STL file can be shared across the world and it is a recognised file format, just like a JPEG, just like a PDF. And it means that it can be used from a wide range of different pieces of software and lots of different hardware can use that. So any 3D printer doesn't matter about the brand or anything like that. It would be able to recognize um, an STL file and it would be able to be 3D printed um, wherever you shared that file to. Also, an STL can be opened up in lots of different types of CAD um, programs, so it just helps for them. Um, to be able to be uh, opened. So it's not going to say that your file is incompatible. It allows it to be shared across lots of different uh, pieces of software. So I hope that one's relatively simple. Um, more advancements in CAD and CAM. Obviously, 3D printing has been a massive um, improvement. Um, it's called rapid prototyping because it is still being used um, as a way of producing prototypes rather than full products because for polymers you would still use injection molding and for metals you would probably use some kind of casting but actually metals are starting to be um, 3d printed which is quite an exciting sort of development so 3d printing really did um, kind of change the way that things are being manufactured and brings a lot of different options. Um, so you all know about 3D printing. Hopefully that you can see the big advantage of, of 3D printing. Um, this one, an extensible markup language, probably never heard of that. It's a bit of a strange um, thing, but basically it means that there's uh, much improved compatibility between different types of software packages. So obviously that is making sure that things are easier to share um, again across um, the world and between lots of different pieces of software, just making them more accessible, easier to use. The next one is called finite element analysis. This was really, really big. You should hopefully know about this um, and also computational fluid dynamics, CFD. So FEA is the ability to simulate lots of different types of forces that happen on a product, but in a CAD piece of software means you do not have to make the product. 
um, to actually test it. You can test it as it's being produced and you can run simulations on your CAD designs, which can help you to make decisions before you even manufacture the product. So components can be reduced in size. Things might need to be strengthened in certain areas. So um, FEA was a, ma a massive um, you know, improvement in the use of CAD because it means you can make improvements at the design stage. Exactly the same as computational fluid dynamics. Anything where, um, for example, fuel needs to um, flow around an engine or even um, polymers flowing into an injection molding um, mold, it, it allows you to simulate how things will move around, how fluids will move and actually improve your product, improve um, the design of it to make sure it's as efficient as possible. So FEA and CFD, big improvements in CAD which saved a lot of time, a lot of material, and a lot of money. Okay, again, the use of um, this one, relatively simple, the use of cloud-based um, software packages. So um, this allows people to work on things at the same time. So kind of collaborative working. So, we don't tend to use cloud-based um, pieces of software, but there are things like um, we have one called Onshape um, and there are lots of um, different packages. There's one called Fusion 360, which allows users to um, basically log on and work on things across the world. So, you know, this means that you can be really productive. Things can be shared really, really easily, um, you know, and it allows products to be designed really, really quickly because you can have lots of different people working on the product at the same time. So the use of cloud-based uh, CAD CAM packages can obviously um, mean that, you know, mass customization of the product can happen because actually could the users can get involved in this process as well and they can make changes to whatever product that they are buying, um, meaning that they can customize it before it's even manufactured. Um, the last one that we're gonna talk about is the use of virtual reality systems. So the incorporating things like 3D headsets and haptic feedback. Haptic feedback, um, they're starting to use it in gaming a lot where you can wear things like a, like a vest that, for example, if you're playing a, um, a first person shooter or a sh a, like a shooting game, as you are, if you are hit, the actual um, vest that you're wearing would vibrate or you would feel the impact, you know, so that's giving people quite a realistic sensory feedback from what the product would feel or what the, um, you know, gives you a different sort of experience of the product. So being able to put a headset on and maybe visualize what the inside of a car would look like or visualize how uh, you would interact with a type of product has really helped to improve that. So it gives a realistic appraisal of designs in a virtual environment. And obviously this means again, um, you know, no physical product is needed, um, but it gives the user um, a really realistic impression of what the product would look like. They can give some feedback on it before it's even um, manufactured. So that's a really big improvement um, in CAD and CAM. OK, that was a little bit rambly, but I hope that was useful. Uh, if any of these don't make any sense to you, you might just want to have a quick look at them either in the textbook or doing a quick Google search or a YouTube search. You'll probably find some good videos that you can use to kind of enhance your knowledge about this area. OK, see you on the next video.